Need more water. Need more water. Need, need more water. Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today, we're gonna show you how to change the shape of anything using the liquify tool. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you how to change the shape of literally anything using one of the coolest features in Photoshop. It's called the liquify tool. In this video, we're gonna show you how I prefer to use the tool, shaping up things like clothing and also adding some volume to hair. And of course you can use it however you see fit. We got a great tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here's our sample image. You can download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. First thing we always wanna do when we're gonna use the liquify tool is make sure that our layer is set to a smart object because the liquify is a filter. And if we apply a filter to a smart object, it becomes a smart filter, which means we can just undo it. That's basically what that means. So anytime you apply a filter, just be sure to change to a smart object first. So in this case, oh, there we go, let's find our image. Let's go ahead and double click here on our background layer. We'll hit okay. And then we're gonna right click and go to convert to smart object. So now that we have this as a smart object, we're ready to start our liquify process. So we're gonna go to filter and down to liquify. Now you get a whole giant dialogue here. There's a lot going on, but all your tools are located here on the top left. And then you have a bunch of options here on the right hand side. Now. For most of the situation, I would say about 90% of the time I'm using the liquify tool, I just use this tool up at the very top left. It's called the forward warp tool. And here's how it works. You can make your brush larger or smaller by using your open and close brackets. And basically you could just click to push and drag. There you go. And it just moves different areas of your photo around. Now, if you have a larger brush, it's gonna move a larger area. If you have a smaller brush, it's gonna move a smaller area. All right, now our settings here on the right hand side, you can change the set size, you can change your pressure, which will be how much actually gets affected. Like with a high pressure, you can see we have a very, <laughs> a very strong effect. I recommend keeping this relatively low, somewhere between 10 and 20. And then our density is how close to the edge of your brush, uh, basically this effect is gonna happen. So usually I'll keep this relatively low again, right about 20%. But you can kind of figure out exactly what you need based on the area that you're working. But in general, I just adjust the size of my brush for the area that I'm actually working on. Okay, now obviously as you just saw, you can make drastic changes. You know, you could like really just do all kinds of crazy weird stuff to a photograph and there's really no limit to it. So just hit undo there. Uh, Controller Command Z is your best friend here. So it's totally up to you to decide like both ethically and like functionally how you'd like to make those changes in your photograph. I tend to think st uh, stick with things like hair and clothing that can just kind of like move around on their own anyway. Uh, personally, I stay away from like shaping anyone's uh, body. So in this case, what I wanna do is just do a couple little adjustments to our subject's clothing. And it's my goal here is to straighten out any lines and any like, you know, angles and fabric and things like that and just kind of clean up those lines a little bit. So we're gonna start right down here, just by clicking from the outside and dragging in. Maybe I'll bring my pressure up a little bit. And you're gonna see I'm using a fairly large brush. I always use a brush that's a little bit larger than the area that I'm working on. There we go. And this helps the transitions look a little bit more natural. So you can see I just pushed that area in a little bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just even out the width of that little belt. We're gonna push in this area a little bit as well. And you can see it is gonna affect the background, but as long as you're relatively subtle with it and you use a large brush, generally it's gonna be not that noticeable. Now, in this case, we have a bit of fabric that's just kind of pluming over here. So we're just gonna kind of push this in. And again, my goal, I'm not trying to shape, change the shape of my subject. This is just the fabric here. Okay, so obviously you get to use this tool and any tool in Photoshop, however you'd like. I'm just giving you a couple little hints and ideas on how I like to use these tools. There we go. So my goal is to just kind of clean up this fabric a little bit. All right, and there we go. That's actually starting to look really nice. Bring that down just a little bit there. 
we have a couple of options that we can see kind of like our before and after. Here in your brush reconstruct options, let's click on this reconstruct and you can actually revert this back to the before and the after. So you can see like a couple little changes actually make a big difference in our photograph. Let's hit cancel there. You can hit okay if you wanna apply those changes. Now, you also have a reconstruct brush. So if you'd like just one area to be reconstructed, well, you can paint over the re over that area and it'll bring it back to its original state. I'm gonna go ahead and click on undo. So let's go back to our forward warp tool. And this time I wanna give the hair just a little bit more volume. Because after all, if it just the wind was blowing a little bit more, it would have a little bit more volume. So we're gonna go ahead and make our brush nice and large. And we're gonna push the hair out a little bit, giving it a little bit more volume. And again, I'm not trying to do like crazy huge changes here. This is just subtle stuff that I think just kind of like improves um, maybe the shape and structure of clothing and, and other things like that. So let's go ahead and click on our reconstruct here and just bring this before and the after so we can see how that looks too. Okay, so you can see uh, I accidentally changed her arm a little bit. So what we're gonna do is use this reconstruct brush paint this right over her arm so it goes back to its original place. So if you accidentally paint over a person's face and smush it or whatever, just reconstruct it. All right, well, there are a lot of additional features and we have other tutorials on using the Liquify tool, but for now, this is basically what I would say is 90% of what I wound up using Liquify tool just here. The forward warp and then just, if I need to fix something up, the reconstruct brush. So let's go ahead and hit okay. And earlier we talked about how we use smart objects because it allows us to turn our smart filters off and on again. So let's check this out. Here's our before and after, which is super cool. Because this is a smart object, it loaded this uh, liquify as a smart filter. So I can actually just turn this liquify off and back on. And here's where you see the before and after with our image. So you can see it's a couple subtle little changes, but they really do make a difference. Now, again, because this is a smart object, I can actually get back into that Liquify dialog and do some reconstruction if I wanted to. You can just double click right here on Liquify and it's gonna open up, this is the exact same Liquify dialog that we were using before. So you could see I could go to my reconstruction and just reconstruct it all the way back down. In fact, I could just go a little bit and hit okay and it would apply those changes as well. So if you don't set this up as a smart object, then the liquify changes you make will actually be baked into the layer and you won't be able to get back here and do some undo stuff. You'll have to try to like push it back or a lot of other just complicated and not necessary things. So let's hit cancel there. Moral of the story, just make sure you're using smart objects because then you can go back and change your liquify at any time. And that's all there is to changing the shape of objects in Photoshop using the Liquify tool. And I encourage you to go in there and play around with some of the additional features as well. And then of course, use your discretion as to how you use this tool because, uh, well, <laughs> you can use it uh, any way you want. So with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you, Spider-Man. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. The whole 30 days of Photoshop is absolutely free. You can sign up for it right down below. You'll get sample images to follow along. You get a calendar where you can stay up to date as well as bonus goodies that are only available through the 30 days of Photoshop series. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.